the election results from this week give us some striking clues about what will happen in the national races next year. We'll start with the obvious takeaway. Republicans are losing a lot of ground in the suburbs and President Trump will certainly have to run up the score in rural counties even more if he expects to win re-election. Well, the pundits have certainly picked up on that point. But I also think it's, it's a warning for other Republicans on a ballot in 2020 because even though President Trump is very popular with the base, he may not have the coattails that, that some Republicans expect. But we also have some less obvious changes afoot that will make the 2020 races even harder for the pollsters to predict. In short, a lot of the people who rarely or never vote are waking up. Americans who have been turned off by politics as usual see how unusual things have become recently, and they are now coming out of their malaise to cast votes. Well, they helped Democrats win on Tuesday, but we do not know who they will elect next year because, frankly, we just don't know much about these new voters. This new wave of voters, well, it, they don't show up in voting records. So most pollsters aren't even calling them in advance and they turned out in big numbers in particular in smaller counties where big firms did not invest in exit polling this week. So we have this huge information gap in what they care about. In short, all the noise in Washington just woke a sleeping giant and we do not know how this giant will respond next year. But again, there are clues in Kentucky's race for governor, for example, where Democrat Andy Bashir came out on top in a state that had been dominated by Republicans for years. So this isn't about politics anymore. Well, that's not entirely true. You can't take politics out of politics. But his point is that he avoided the sideshow in Washington and focused on issues that directly affect the people of his state. There is so much that Jacqueline and I ran on challenges that are facing our families from public education to pensions to health care to jobs. Yeah, concerns about education, flat wages, the environment and access to health care appear to be driving voting behavior in 2018 and again this year. And we saw it specifically this week in places where the coal industry is fading. Families are struggling to get health care or fear losing it through Medicaid and many see their friends or loved ones turning to illegal pain pills. And right now they are reacting to all of this like that famous line from Network. I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. And with that in mind, candidates from both parties would be wise to focus on issues and stress their positive alternative instead of tearing the other side down. And both parties would also be wise to invest more in local candidates and races because, as we have repeatedly said, politics, especially in Florida, is not top down, it's bottom up. Local candidates don't often ride the coattails of their statewide or presidential nominees. It's usually the other way around. Local campaigns drive the turnout, especially in the smaller counties, and the statewide or national players often ride their coattails. The, the Democratic Party has really just never focused on how do we build from the bottom up. Well, bold blue campaigns demonstrated that last year when statewide Democrats perform much better in counties where they focused on helping local Democrats win. And that really energized people to get involved in the process, whether it was transportation, or schools or, you know, the buses, how they run. Um, you know, these issues are issues that everyday people care about. And a lot of everyday people who have failed to vote in recent years are now turning out because they think their government is failing them.